Salmon aquaculture is an important contributor to the economies of many regions, including British Columbia. Fish farming generates hundreds of jobs, mostly in coastal communities, with limited employment opportunities. However, thousands more jobs depend on healthy oceans, abundant wild salmon populations, and rich and diverse ecosystems. For salmon aquaculture to continue, it must become far more sustainable. Industrial net cage farming has lost the support of the public, lost its social license, and is losing support in the marketplace. If we want a future with healthy wild salmon, aquaculture jobs in coastal communities, and a secure share of global markets that are demanding sustainability, then Canada needs to invest in the future. Invest in closed containment salmon farming. Yeah, we all decided that it, it, you know, the future for us, the future for the fish industry, the world, you know, we got to start changing our ways. So, so yeah, I mean, even salmon, it's hard, hard to get wild pink salmon certain times of the year when we used to be able to. I've always been an admirer of, of leadership, uh, and what we see here today is leadership. What uh, Sea Choice and the Overweighty Food Group has accomplished is getting a sustainable seafood product on, into the hands of everyday consumers. We see definitely the future would be in uh, closed containment freshwater systems. I believe closed containment can work very well for salmon. It's got to have the right combination of resources and the right designs, but yes, it can work very well. If closed containment offers so much economic potential and so many benefits, why is the aquaculture industry resisting change? They're avoiding to investigate new ideas where that may not be a good idea, because it could be better. And that's where my belief comes from. So I'm not there of eliminating someone, but providing a better alternative. Well, it's never been done before uh, for close containment up to five kilos for salmon. Now, I think because net pen operations have been going in Canada since the early 70s, east and west coast, they're very reluctant to change, because it has been profitable in the past. Some net cage proponents claim that closed containment isn't feasible due to potential technological and economic barriers, yet professionals working with closed containment farming say otherwise. Closed containment salmon farms are working right now. Uh, in Washington State, there's a good example of a coho farm that's using RAS technology with great success. RAS or recirculation technology has made some incredibly uh, advancements over the last, I would say, 10 years. It is just so that with salmon, it really hasn't gone to uh, the final food fish size. Uh, a lot of the smolts are raised now in recirculation system, both in Chile, in Norway, and I think to some extent uh, in BC. So uh, that to me is, is proof that recirculation systems are getting a foothold even in the salmon industry now. Talking about the technology part of it is that it can expand into other, other areas, you know, with um, aquaponics and so forth. Right now our production uh, is around 1,000 metric tons of food fish. 80,000 tons is being produced in BC. We do not have to have eight 10,000 ton units. We can have 81,000 ton. And that would employ a lot of people. One reason net cage industrial farming is profitable is due to externalized costs. At present, the salmon farming industry pays nothing for waste disposal. Fish feces and uneaten feed pellets go directly into the ocean. Our environment and wild marine species pay the price that secures the industry's profits. I believe that if everything's put together properly using the right resources, that the cost of production can be lower than the the alternative production methods. We, we don't use any antibiotics uh, and no chemotherapeutins and our mortality is ex exceedingly low. Uh, we don't have any, uh, any issues in terms of animal health uh, welfare. When you look around the world, salmon is kind of associated with Canada and specifically with British Columbia. So it's just to me it's another branding for the province and it it's, has all the accolades that it should have. Energy consumption and the carbon footprint of closed tank systems have been raised as concerns. The energy consumption is a problem, but that is one thing we address in the design so we reduce the energy requirements to as low as possible. Yeah, certainly we, we use more energy than they would have to, to use on NetPen simply because uh, 
net pens have free water and we have to pump the water. We get a lot of our energy from uh, hydroelectric power on the Columbia. We are probably as low as we can be in terms of uh, carbon footprint. Consumers are increasingly aware of the crisis in global fisheries and are voting with their wallets for more sustainable seafood options. Well, yeah, the market has responded quite well to, uh, to the product that we have introduced, both uh, here in this greater Seattle area, as well as in California, and also, of course, up in Vancouver through Overweight. There's a number of retailers that come out with sustainable uh, seafood policies, and sourcing the product has been the issue for all of us around the world. We want the consumer to have options, and I think the consumer, with what we've heard from them, are actually looking for more viable options. More and more, I think people are aware of it. Even one year ago, at the time I started, and now, people are so much more aware of the sustainability. So that's becoming hot topic, which is good. Yeah, I think in terms of close containment for salmon, we'll probably uh, see an advancement in terms of uh, uh, more systems being put in place. I, I think BC really has, has, um, has an opportunity to to build on this, um, whether it be along the coast or, or inland. It's a small industry right now. I think it needs public support. I think it uh, needs an investment, and I think the government regulations need to look at where aquaculture is in this country. Closed containment can provide green jobs in BC's coastal communities, new technology export potential, and a more stable future for farm salmon in consumer markets. The momentum is growing, the demand is rising, and there is an opportunity to take a leadership role. BC and Canada can seize the helm or miss the boat. Living Ocean Society and thousands upon thousands of voters across this country want Canada to invest now in a better future for the industry, our communities, and our wild salmon.